We're here at the 2017 CROI. We're here with the Young Investigator Panel, and as always, we have a few young investigators who are uh, aspiring to do good work and find a cure for AIDS and everything else, but typically uh, it's usually just a piece of all of that, and, and we want to know what your piece of it is and who you are, and uh, maybe our audience is out there saying, gee, I wonder if I should do that too, you know? So we'll start over there with Sam, and tell us your, you know, your affiliation and so forth uh, initially. Uh, so my name is Sam Lee. Uh, I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Colorado in Denver. Um, I grew up in Olathe, Kansas. Um, I moved out to Colorado for graduate school. Um, and our lab works on the gut microbiome, so the bacteria that colonize your intestines, um, and how that impacts HIV infection. Mm -hmm. Great. And Louise? Uh, so my name is Louise. Um, I'm at the University of Montreal at the CH Center. It's a research center. Um, initially, I'm from France. Uh, I'm no, I did my undergraduate study in the Switzerland, and now I'm a master's student uh, in Nicolas Schumann's lab, and we are working on uh, quantifying the reservoir, the latent reservoir mm -hmm. on HIV. Can you tell us just a little more about your the work you're doing? And, and you brought each of you uh, to explain to our audience, and uh, I'm sure there's first timers here occasionally, um, what the poster session is, because it's, you know, it's a peer review process, but explain to that and also about your work uh, and what you brought here specifically, and, and as uh, simplified as you can. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is actually my first time at CROI. Um, so this is the largest meeting that I've been to. Uh, the poster session has been really great and uh, uh, really helpful. I've been getting a lot of great feedback from other scientists. Um, so specifically, my project is focused on how the microbiome changes between uh, low-risk heterosexual men and high-risk MSM or men who have sex with men. Um, and so there's been some recent evidence showing that there's some alterations in the microbiome with MSM. And Explain the microbiome. So the microbiome is the collection of uh, microbes that are found in your gut. Um, so these can be uh, bacteria, fungi, um, viruses, Healthy problem, and some are problems, some are healthy. Yes, yeah, some are healthy, some are not so healthy. Um, so uh, we've been finding alterations in, in the microbiome that are associated with MSM, um, and we're trying to figure out whether that can lead to differences in the immune system in MSM. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. Louise? So it's also my first time at mm -hmm. Hoi. Cool. Uh, and I'm really grateful for that because it, <laughs> yeah. it's always good to see the impact. Yes, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it's uh, also my first international conference uh, I've been to. And uh, the poster station, as I've had said, is uh, really, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, it's really uh, interesting to have yeah, feedback from other uh, scientists and also be able to discuss with other students that are the same level as you are to what they think and how they see uh, your research. And uh, so that's great to have some feedback. I'm more specifically working with, uh, as, as a cohort from Thailand of uh, individuals that are uh, treated very early in the infection. Um, and um, the poster I was presenting and the part of the project I was presenting at COI was about uh, looking uh, where uh, the reservoir was establishing uh, during this acute infection and also to estimate the effect of art on this uh, reservoir in early, uh, if you treat early enough. So, and uh, what we found is that um, uh, in long-lived cells um, that have a long life, there is a lot of establishment of the reservoir, but if you treat early enough, it's going to uh, diminish very uh, rapidly. But uh, if you treat later, so um, after 30 uh, days, uh, the diminution will be less uh, marked, and so you will have maybe more, uh, the size of the reservoir will be, will be bigger. And I think um, one of the things we, well, there's so much you could talk about at the Croix, but 
One of the things we try to do is confirmatory trials. I know that other people have done this kind of work, but you find a way to do it in a way that describes it in a different uh, setting, uh, and then others can say, these are references to all that, what describes that particular situation, mm -hmm. and conclu kind of draws that same conclusion, so you're confirming with others. Yes, it's, it's confirming with others. There is also other co op doing the same work. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, studying the same thing. So it's really nice to, yes, confirming and uh, seeing what others see to be sure, like we maybe are go getting to something that is actually interesting and could help in the future. Everybody does their work just a little differently, but they hopefully come to the same conclusions. Yes. If they don't, then we're in trouble, then we have more work to but, do. But it's good, yeah. because it's good if you have different maybe method or uh, application and at the end, that if the conclusion is an ending to be the same, it's really interesting because it needs to be reassuring for us. Mm -hmm. and it's also really good to know that you're actually going somewhere in your exactly. little work. In your, your work is confirm, <laughs> confirmed by others and you're confirming their work. Yes. So um, more about your backgrounds and so forth. You, you kind of did already talk about that, but I think the, the big question is what got you into the, the field? And, and is this, what is, what is your plan? I mean, you start out at such, you move here, and then can you see where your future is headed, you know? Yeah, um, so how I got into this uh, is actually, a, it's a little bit corny, I guess. So in high school, I, I read a book called um, The Hot Zone, which is about um, an Ebola outbreak uh, that was in uh, Western Virginia, I, I think in the, the <clears throat> 80s or 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, I got really excited about um, infectious disease research, uh, and so I, I went through college um, and I joined um, a research lab in college uh, working on um, genetics and fruit flies. Mm -hmm. um, and so that just got me more interested in, in doing scientific research. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I went on to, um, to go to grad school um, and, and doing my PhD in, in microbiology. Mm -hmm. So I guess I've always been interested in, in infectious disease research, and that's kind of what got me into, mm -hmm. into research. And you don't seem to see any sway from that to anywhere else. It's, it, that's the path you're likely going to take. Um, yeah, I, I think so. Career-wise, um, I'd like to keep pursuing a, um, a career in academic science. Um, mm -hmm. So what that means is, is progressing from a postdoctoral fellow, um, which is a position I have now, to a more independent research position, um, and hopefully doing, continuing doing research on infectious disease. Great. Well, because I know if we had a group of four or five, the, there could be, in fact, I talked to one young lady last night that uh, at the poster session who said, Oh, you probably don't want me. I'm changing directions, you know. And I said, mm -hmm. no, that's that's part of it. You know, you don't get, yeah. you don't necessarily get in and stick with it. The same thing if you see something that comes along, or you narrow your field, or you broaden it. It's, mm -hmm. I yeah. guess, you're more more likely to narrow the field than broaden it when you're uh, advancing yourself. Right. Yeah. But, but what what motivates you uh, to um, to? Did you have like uh, an experience? Other, I mean, that obviously is a good enough experience. But is there a motivation factor that gets you out of bed in the morning and makes you excited to do the work? Yeah, um, I think what's most gratifying about doing um, academic research is that you have intellectual freedom um, to pursue the line of work that you want to pursue um, and ask the the specific questions that you want to ask and try to answer. Um, and I think um, th it's really gratifying when, when you make a, a new discovery, however small or big, in the lab. Um, it's, it's exciting to, to think that uh, this piece of information is something that no one else knows yet. And you're but the they will, and that's why will. you're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it gets recorded in a way that we can understand and use it, other people can use it because you already did the work, so they yeah. now take that and, and use that to move forward on their work. Right, yeah. yes. Yeah. So Louise, how do you 
Uh, How does that hit you? So for me, <laughs> it came much, much later. So I started uh, undergraduate studying biology, but it was biology of everything. I was studying plants as well as mm -hmm. uh, human disease and as well as animals. And mm -hmm. then uh, in my third year of undergraduate study, I wanted to focus more, but I didn't know on what, but I wanted to focus more on one subject. And I was particularly interested in immunology. So I did, I was at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And then I did an exchange program with the University of Montreal. And I had my first uh, courses of virology. And I was like, oh, wow, viruses are very impressive. Nobody likes them. But actually, I have to recognize that they are really impressive because they are not really uh, living organism, but what they can do, it's, uh, it's, it's widely uh, impressive. So then I finished my undergraduate uh, study, and I was like, oh, what should I do next? And then there, uh, I emailed some professor like in virology because I wanted to work on virus. And uh, I, it ended up to be a HIV virus. And then um, now I'm working on a clinical, more clinical study. And I really like that is like every day I know that what I do, it actually maybe will help and give feedback to uh, this community that is giving so much to advance the research every day. I think our audience, uh, some of our audience that's less well informed, will probably think that we're going to find a, an answer in a very simple term. It's a very complex disease, so it's going to, like they used to say, there's no silver bullet, there's just silver BBs. So there's a lot of pieces that go together. In fact, we always thought it was going to be one drug, well, we thought it was going to be one drug, then it's going to be one vaccine. Mm -hmm. No, it's going to be multivalent. It's, and, and so, in the same way, pieces of what you do will inform the collection of information that makes the answer, the big answer. So, someday, yeah. Yeah, but sometimes it's uh, when, when you're stuck and you said like, oh, I'm going nowhere, mm -hmm. and then um, it, you think you're just a little part of a really much bigger thing. And when you come to Koi, that you really realize that, that there is so it's many things, and it's gonna be all there. And, mm -hmm. and probably we all the answer are, maybe somewhere already there, but you just have to combine them and, and, and put it together. Yeah, and yeah. put it together. And that's, that's not easy because there is some contradiction in the field. And that's the other thing I was going to say to you, that do you, did you, are there any expectations that you, things you expected that didn't pan out, that you said, oh, I didn't realize this about science? <laughs> because I think, you know, we, there is controversy there. And at some point, the controversy is resolved by enough of the confirmatory trials in one direction. So is there anything that surprised you about science that uh, went maybe as young as you were and how things didn't work out the way you thought? Um, so, yeah, so about science in general, I think uh, what's surprised me uh, the most is, is how competitive it can get. Mm -hmm. um, it's So sometimes it's not always about um, for the greater cause, or or mm -hmm. putting out, you know, um, publishing your work, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, there's a lot of competitive competitiveness between individuals and between certain labs. Publish or perish, and all that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The first one to yeah. publish. It. Right. <laughs> yeah. But if you if you look at it from a very, uh, I mean, there's so many people that are out there that are doing good work, and and yeah. but you as you say, there is a lot of competition. But yeah. And, and especially now with funding as tight as it is, so you really have to find, uh, I think one person said to me, you have to be at the same time, you're, you're pu when you're publishing, you still have to be looking for your next project, you have to be, all of the things you do in your life, yeah. big things, you have to be doing at the same time. Because once you're done with your project, right. you have to make sure there's a future next project for you to move on to. Yeah. So, what about in, in that light? Uh, what about mentors? Uh, did did you do you have the same mentor all the way through, or did you change, or is this something that was important and helpful to you? Uh, for me, I have um, actually in the lab we have one research associate and and one postdoc that are really <coughs> helping uh, the undergraduate study uh, students or PhD students who get uh, through and help them with their project, but also. Uh, 
my supervisor is also really present and uh, if I have question or uh, if I am wondering about something or, or, or I cannot move on on my project, you will always be there. But I guess I'm still really new in the field and I'm only a master's student. I'm, going, I'm guessing that the older and the advanced you get, the more like on by yourself and maybe you get, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's important to have a mentor mm, and, yeah. and somebody that can, you can support and ask questions of. And how about you? Yeah, um, I've been really lucky to have some really great mentors throughout um, college and grad school. Um, so, uh, so in college, the, the lab that I, that I worked in, I was actually um, the only student that worked in the lab. So I got a lot of um, great uh, mentorship um, from my professor. Um, and then in grad school, uh, my PhD mentor, he was, um, he was an, uh, an early career scientist, um, so he was just starting out his lab, so he was um, really enthusiastic and a really um, hands-on mentor and um, um, gave me a really good mentorship. Um, and then now, uh, my current mentor during my postdoc um, is a little bit more hands-off, and so it's nice to be at this position where I can have a little bit more, um, more freedom with, mm -hmm. with what I do in the lab. Mm -hmm. So it's a so nice progression of... You, you, <coughs> you gravitate toward the, the kind of work that most fits your mental model of, of what you feel like you want to do, like you were talking about freedom and to, to kind of head in directions that are uh, more um, fluid or um, it'd be nimble enough to do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I really feel that it's, it's important for our people to understand, uh, the audience to understand about the science as being complicated. But have you had any things that stood out to you or each of you, uh, which has been your really success that you really felt great about or disappointments? And of course, we understand that disappointments are, if you're talking about in science, <laughs> it is an answer. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. a, a negative response to something is an answer. It's maybe not the one you wanted, but it then proves that you don't. Nobody has to, not, not necessarily, but probably people won't do it again, mm -hmm. if if mm -hmm. it's pretty, you know, scientific. Uh, if the scientific rigor stands up, but have yeah. you had that experience? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Luis will agree, but science is is like ninety percent uh, disappointment, mm -hmm. <laughs> a very small percentage of uh, feeling of success. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that only but, makes the the successful moment richer. Yeah, when you hit it, it, it definitely does. Yeah, but I also have always a positive set of mind, like saying, as you said, uh, even if it's not the result we expect, expected, that result, and that give us something. If even if it's not what we wanted at the end, it's just saying that okay, maybe we shouldn't head in this direction, or we should do something different, but mm -hmm. to change it and. And at the end, even uh, if it's not what people see in the paper or in the poster, all the answer we have on our poster is because we had a way to build it and uh, we answered a tiny question each time and each day. Mm -hmm. Have you, you both went through the poster session now, obviously, because yes. we were there. Um, what did you, what was your experience? Did you, were you beat up pretty bad or, or no? <laughs> or did um, people like, cite? get excited when they saw what no, you No, people were excited for the most part, um, and it was really nice to, to meet the other people that are doing similar work in your field, because um, these are people that you've been reading papers right. that they've been publishing, and so <coughs> um, it's really nice to put a, a face and personality to, to, the, to the papers that you've been reading. Because for our audience's benefit, uh, the, the publishers are put into groupings. Mm -hmm. in, in the, the location where they actually, and, and you stand before your work and you have to support and answer questions and, and say, this is why I am doing this. And they hit you back and say, well, how could you get to that when you do this and this? And it, it maybe doesn't make sense to them, but then you have to correct them. And you, it's a battle back and forth to explain why you came to the conclusion you did and how you can sub, sub, stand on those, that answer and that response. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you get a lot of uh, good feedback and, and people point out things that you, you may not have noticed about your own project and your own work. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really helpful for 
for progressing your mm -hmm. your uh, your research. How about you? Did you get beat up a little? Or no? um, <laughs> it's okay. I was a little bit impressed because I was like, oh, I'm only new in the field, and then it's going to be all this big researcher, really uh, well known, and uh, yeah. really. Um, but uh, it, it was fun. I, I found it like everybody uh, present themselves, and it was more about a talk uh, than uh -huh. just uh, and a real exchange. Some are working on similar projects, and uh, some are just interested of the technique you use and why did you decide to use this technique. And it's really interesting to have an exchange. And moreover, it's also yeah, showing you new things about your, uh, your project. So you get out of the station, you have you are full of idea of what is the next step and what you are going to do next. Mm -hmm. And it's also good to have um, some, especially if it's not published uh, uh, data, that uh, you you can uh, you can um, have maybe some limitation point out that uh, you can correct before go for publication. So. So as we wrap up here, is there anything you wanted to throw out there or ask a question to me moving forward? Oh. Um, I'm, I'm just an old, I'm, <laughs> I'm an old activist, so I've been around forever. So I don't know how I fit into the picture, other than I'm curious always about the, every year I hear similar and, and things that are different in these, in these discussions. Um, I guess just that science, doing science is, is really gratifying. Um, it's, it's a hard job. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, failure involved uh, as far as doing experiments in the lab. A lot of experiments don't work. Um, but uh, the times that it does work and the times that you do make discoveries, it's, it's incredibly gratifying. Yeah, yeah. How about yourself? Um, for me, yeah. It's a good, it's a, only the beginning of a maybe longer pathway. I, I, I didn't say, but I don't really know what is going to be my next step. I'm happy to do a master and then uh, we'll see how, where it goes. But yeah, I'm really interested to, and I like this kind of conference that bring together only like clinical uh, science and basic science, but also uh, activists. Like exactly. you. It, it, it's right it's really nice and it's really nice to address <coughs> all the community and uh, and my question was like uh, when did you start doing this capsule um, well uh, most of us who are in the activist field if you will mm -hmm. began because of the drama that occurred what the grim days of, of the early days of HIV and uh, we saw people dying all around us we said I'm not gonna be one of those it was fight or flight and we took the fight so others, you know, just said, I'm, I'm done, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, with that, I think it's important for you to understand that history. And I think um, the Martin Delaney lecture mm -hmm. often does that. Uh, we've seen a lot of people that have been there that uh, uh, respect, obviously respect him. And then re it's kind of like the, the same thing with the Bernard Field lecture and the, mm -hmm. the Ngali Man lecture. You get a sense of the spirit of the science. And it's there. They're here with us. And we're all about finding the answers. Yeah, and I was I will maybe say just thank you, thank you for all you're doing. We are doing research because you are there and you are helping mm -hmm. us. So. Exactly. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you a lot. Thank, thank you. you.